Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking a bit more at the basics of After Effects, and specifically we're going to be looking at the viewport. And since there's so many different tools at the bottom bar of the viewport, you can skip ahead. I'll try and mark everything on the timeline down below. So yeah, just getting started. We're going to start from right to left. And the reason why is because I found that some of the left-hand side items are affected by the right-hand side toggles. So getting started on the right hand side, we're going to be looking at reset exposure and reset exposure only affects the preview of your artboard or your canvas. Dragging it to the left darkens the canvas and bringing it to the right lightens the exposure. So that is just affecting the preview, not necessarily your export. And this next one includes the composition flowchart in case you want to look at all of your canvases and compositions in nodes and modules. And so here you can collapse entire compositions in case you have a lot of compositions. You don't want to have all of them open at once necessarily. So as you can see here, these are all of our assets. And if we were to create a new pre-comp, it turns it into its own pre-comp module with the, the addition to expand and view the assets inside of that. Um, and this can help if you're having trouble finding a specific asset, you can open up all of your different pre-comps just inside of this flowchart view, which is really nice, especially working in bigger projects. And then here for timeline, this just switches your mouse focus to the timeline. As you can see, we have the, the blue outline around the timeline. That's because we are inside the timeline. And if we click back into the viewport, we'll be back into the viewport. And then for fast previews, this is particularly important if you are having trouble previewing your compositions because of the render time. Like if you're working with really complex shapes and objects, if you just want to see that an item or a shape is moving the correct way based off of a change that you made in the keyframes, then you can click wireframe and it will turn everything into wireframes based on the bounding lines of that object and so previewing motion might be easier in this view the wireframe view if you're having trouble rendering um, and if you're like short on time so but this is only affecting the preview not the actual export i usually have it either off or on fast draft a uh, fast draft can decrease the re resolution though in your preview so just be wary of that and then if we go into toggle pixel aspect ratio correction, I always have this enabled. It's not common to have it unchecked, but it depends on how you are exporting. Moving on from the aspect ratio correction, we have the view options. And so this is really important if you start to get into 3D animation. Having two horizontal views is really useful there. Um, I prefer horizontal, but you can have it vertical as well. And the reason why is because in 3D, you can have a top-down view, a bird's eye view, and then the front-facing view that will be prevalent in your export. This is just to get multiple different angles of your project. And this could also be useful if you need to view two, two separate compositions at the same time and you want to scrub through both of those at the same time, you can have two different pre-comps visible at the same time. We're going to switch back to single view, active camera. This is useful for when you're working in 3D and you have multiple views. You can select a single view option and switch it to, let's say, right, top. Like as you can see, it defaulted to top because I tend to do that when I'm working in 3D. I like to view it from a bird's eye view and also from the front. Um, as you can see here, active camera, this is what's going to be exported. Front is usually what the active camera is. And so that is camera angles. Here is useful if you're working with objects that you want transparent backgrounds on and you want to make sure that the background is actually transparent because as you can see here, it's white, but if I remove the white, it isn't an object that is white in the background there. And so if we view transparent toggle, you can see that our uh, little wave hand is not actually transparent. So this would not look good as a transparent GIF on a black background, for example. So very useful for checking whether or not your canvas is actually transparent. 
And then here we move on to the region of interest tool, which is a really neat tool for rendering issues. Again, we're going back to rendering. If you're having trouble playing through your composition because it's a really heavy composition for your GPU to process, region of interest can allow you to only preview a specific section of your canvas, so it's not rendering all of the pixels on your composition. Um, so we have this toggled here, and we're going to click and draw a rectangle over the area that we want to preview. And so now it is only going to preview the content within that box. And if you end up liking this box more than the composition size that you currently have, you can go to composition, crop comp to region of interest. And then if we want to reset our region of interest, you can hold option on your Mac and click the toggle there. And I believe it's a uh, control for PC. And then here, Again, going back to uh, rendering issues, we have the ability to render at full resolution, half resolution, a third of the resolution or a quarter, and so it will play back faster the lower your resolution is. But this is only for the preview, it's not for the export, so if I am constantly using it at third, a third of the resolution, I will still be exporting at full resolution at the end of the day. So I'm going to click out of region of interest. I'm going to set this back to auto, which sets it to half. Here we can just take a snapshot of our composition. And then here we can select on the timeline where we want to go specifically. So moving on to toggle mask and shape path visibility. I have had a lot of issues with this one getting accidentally unchecked. And I'm wondering where my bounding boxes went and my anchor points for those boxes and shapes. This allows you to view the outlines of shapes and solids and masks. So if we go here and create a rectangle, we can see the general outline of the shape. But if we go in and we create a mask on this one, and we move the mask, we can see the mask outline and its anchor points as well. But if we uncheck, our object, we can no longer view the mask even though it's selected, and we can no longer view the outline of our shape. And so if we check it, we can see the general shape of the rectangle and our mask. So if you're ever lost and wondering where your anchor points went, it's probably because this got unchecked by accident. Allegedly. <laughs> And now we move on to grid and guide options, which is useful. And underneath view, we can always snap to grid or snap to guides. So keep that in mind as we look through these. Uh, they give you a title and action safe guide just right from the get go, which is nice. So you can see where text should be placed, where action sequences should remain inside of such and such bounding boxes. This is especially useful if you are exporting for commercial use, uh, knowing where to place your text within what bounds, etc. Unfortunately, I've tried this. I don't know if there's a way around it, but you can't snap to these particular guides for the title and action sequence, I believe. Uh, they also have a proportional grid, which is nice for composition purposes. And then you can also view the entire grid. So let me uncheck the proportional grid. The entire grid. You can also change the dimensions of that grid inside of preferences, grids, and guides. And then we are also able to enable the rulers, which can also be done with Command R to view rulers. And then to place your own guides, which can be snapped to, we can click and drag from the ruler and place anywhere. So along the PDF of this this hand and our square snaps to it. So that is guides and grids. Here we can set our viewport to fit 100%, um, 200, 50, just changing how close we are to the assets. You can also do that with command plus and command minus. It's another way to go about it. Here, Adobe Immersive Environment. This is chaotic at best. And this uses 3D immersive tools, so VR. So if you have 360 degree video footage, you can place it into After Effects. 
we are going to need to enable our 3D editor space because this is primarily for 360 degree video footage. So if you have 360 footage, we're going to take a look at that right now. I have some right here in the VR360 pre-comp that you might have noticed earlier. And in order to get started in the immersive environment, we need to enable the VR um, editor space. So we go under window, all the way to the bottom, VR comp editor. And we're gonna give that a go. And let's add 3D edit. These are our compositions. We're gonna select the VR360 comp that we're in. Good to go. And let's add 3D edit. But alas. Our GPU is not strong enough, so I'm going to move over to my PC. We're going to move on to this primary viewer toggle, and this is for when you're using multiple views on your uh, viewport. So here if we have two views and one is top and one is front view, you can use one of these two views that you have enabled as the primary view. So usually we have this front view as our primary view, but we can switch it to a top view, for example, if we're using a 3D space. So those are all of the basic tools on our viewport in After Effects, and I hope you all learned something new. Um, I did a bit of research on this, and I personally found the most use in the region of interest. I hadn't used it before, and now I am sure I'm going to be using it constantly, <laughs> just to save time. Um, but if there's anything else you guys want to learn about After Effects, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!